Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching our video first look and a quick review of the Ubuntu Touch OS. This is a mobile operating system. In fact, it's one of the last mobile OSs we haven't reviewed here at OS Reviews, which we're very excited to take a look at. And it was originally released by Canonical back in 2013, but now it's running on version 15.04, and we have it on a Nexus 4, which is one of the few devices that Canonical is continuously releasing updates to, and it's very easy to port onto your phone once you root it. Other devices include the Galaxy Nexus and the Nexus 5, so you can always tr uh, try out this OS if you're tired of Android, for instance. So this entire operating system is built on gestures. It's very easy to access your multitasking uh, menus, it's easy to slide through your commonly used applications, and it's a beautiful, elegant, and well-designed UI. And at the time, it was competing against Firefox OS, which came out also around 2013. And while Firefox won in terms of having more partners and OEMs crafting devices on the market, uh, Ubuntu was a winner in terms of having an elegant and well-refined UI that was easy to use and made a lot of sense. And at the time, this UI was uh OS, I should say, was groundbreaking because of its convergence functionality. So essentially, if you have this running on a phone, what you can do is open up a terminal uh, to run code, for instance. You could also connect it to a monitor and tr uh, transform, basically, the monitor into a full-blown Ubuntu Linux PC. So the notion of carrying a computer in your pocket was really pioneered um, you know, through this, this early OS, and now we have it again with, uh, of course, Windows 10, bring out a similar continuum functionality, and of course, of course, iOS is also trying to do that with the pseudo computer-like um, experience you get on an iPad Pro. So this is it was the first time we really saw this work in person and actually, you know, without any other adapters or bulky uh, docs required from Canonical back in 2013. So it's really interesting to see, you know, how this platform has evolved since then. And sadly, there still, still isn't a ton of hardware with pre-installed Ubuntu Touch that you can pick up. They're extremely rare. You can try looking on Amazon or eBay, but only one or two pop up, you know, every few months or so, and they are either produced by EQ Aquarius, which is a manufacturer we don't really see a lot of here in the States, or also by Meizu, a Chinese-based OEM. So again, they're very rare, and so we uh, had to kind of boot, uh, port this after rooting this phone and uh, taking a closer look at it. So again, taking a quick look at the how the OS functions first. When you first tap it on, there is this home screen and there's this pretty interesting uh, symbolic clock that is representing your time. There's also date and notifications as they push through. You can also set a lock code if you want to. And the drag down notification drawer is also interesting because you can simply swipe your fingers left and right to access all of the various features and tabs. So for instance, right from this uh, drag down drawer, which is the same that you get after unlocking the phone, there's access to things like Bluetooth. There's also things such as your network settings for SIM cards, uh, Wi-Fi, sound settings, battery information, uh, location, GPS information, files, rotation lock, as well as a uh, notification. So they, they divide all this information to separate tabs in the drawer, but it's also very easy to access one-handed since all you need to do is really swipe left or right by holding it for a few seconds. Now you can unlock the phone by swiping from any corner and afterwards you're greeted to the main home. Here all your applications are stored in this vertical orientation and it's easy to again use one-handed and you have things such as your phone dialer, your messaging, contacts, camera, browser, or clock displayed right on top for easier use. And and down below here, there are some other uh, customized apps. Most of these have been pre-installed, but you can also download more applications from the Ubuntu store, and they work pretty well. There's a growing selection of games and productivity apps, but obviously not the same quantity or in the same range as Android or iOS at the, at the moment. Uh, so some of these apps include Amazon, there's a calculator on here, and they actually give you a tutorial on how to use this calculator, but you can just rotate the screen to get a scientific view, for instance, and you simply swipe from the edge of the device get rid of it. So it's uh, similar to Miko OS, which funnily enough, uh, there is some source code that's uh, drawn from that uh, platform. And at the same time, if you want to multitask, it's also easy because you swipe from the right hand edge of the screen and that brings up all of your open cards and you can then tap between your currently open applications or close them up by swiping them up. So that's very similar to also uh, web OS we saw with uh, Palm and HP and also with Blackberry OS. So there's a lot of these really interesting swipe gestures and also, of course, Canonical has built on their own unique aspects that makes this phone really easy to use once you get the hang of it. So down below here, other applications include a few games that they built in as well. There's something called Dropping Letters, which is uh, kind of like crossword or 
a letter scrambling game that you have letters continuously dropping from the top to the bottom. And what happens is that you have to very quickly connect these letters together to form words. And if you form a word correctly, it uh, goes away. But in the same way that Tetris works, if all these letters fill up to the top of the screen, they fill randomly, then you lose the game if you don't you know, beat out or eliminate any words. So it's kind of interesting and fun to play as well. So let's get out of that application. Other things on here, access to eBay. There is a uh, file manager as well. Facebook is on here. Gallery view. There's also a Gmail client. Music, Sudoku, so another game on here. Shorts, which gives you periodicals that you can customize with. Notes client, system settings, UNAV, which uses GPS for navigation services. A weather client, and also Twitter, as well as terminal. So if you want to uh, go back to kind of this Linux uh, terminal, you can then search things up uh, the old-fashioned way, move documents around, for instance, or run code. So taking a look at the notes on here, it's you will notice that it takes a few seconds to load. One thing about Ubuntu Touch, at least on this Nexus 4, is it seems like it's not as snappy as stock Android version 5.0.1, which is Lollipop that is now on this phone. So you can have to notice maybe there's a one or two second delay. It's not too bad, but it seems like there can be a bit more of optimization that, that's done. So here we see that there's a test that I quickly typed out and taking a look at the keyboard very quickly, you can tap on edit down below here. This is what the stock Ubuntu touch keyboard looks like. It's actually very easy to use. It's very responsive. And there's also predictive text that comes in in addition to back, uh, undo keys, you can do attachments. There's also for highlighting documents, changing the columns. So this uh, note, application also works fairly well. So I can close it when I'm satisfied and organize all of my notes and also sync it to Evernote if I want to. So let's get out of that. Other things on here include, again, just the Ubuntu store. So if we want to take a quick look at that, you notice that every single time the Wi-Fi is working, it's syncing, there is a little bar that's going to be navigating left and right. Uh, and when it's done, it's fully loaded up. We can take a look at some of their apps. So most, most of these are either games or productivity-based apps. You can see Simon's Cat is on here. There's a Pokédex scope. So um, some of the more popular titles, maybe from Android, are also going to be developed on this platform, but obviously the selection is a bit more lacking. But uh, you can still do everything that you really want to in terms of working as well as some entertainment from here. And if you want to go you know, watch videos or stream video, you could always try the browser directly because that works fairly well. So sliding on the left to the right here, there's a second tab or a page of um, music specific applications. So it's going to pull for you automatically popular albums. So we see Rebecca Ferguson here. Um, there's also Bastille. And down below here, there's popular tracks on YouTube, so music videos or MVs. Sometimes on a page, you can also pull up from this display to access uh, more settings, such as managing specific tasks that I want to display on this page. And you'll see this occasionally on other uh, programs as well. So for instance, you saw on the calculator that I pulled up a few seconds ago that the same thing could be found. I could pull up to get more preferences uh, and settings set up. So it's a, another gesture that you can do from the bottom up of the display. From each individual homepage, you can then search up specific uh, maybe songs or music, for instance. So One pull. critique of this implementation is that there isn't a universal search client. So all of your searches will be divided between things like you know, music, for instance, and if I swipe again to the right, it's going to take me to my videos drawer where I can look at popular videos and streaming services. So if I want to search through programs and all my apps that I have installed, uh, it can't be done in just this one place. You kind of have to remember which page you should be on to search for that specific content. So that's one area where we can still see some work with Ubuntu Touch. Um, otherwise, if I want to take a look at some other applications on here, such as the phone dialer pad, it's also fairly elegant, and you can see this is what it looks like. I can pull up again to have a look at my recent calls, for instance, as well as my profile. Let's exit out of that and uh, take a look at the settings next. This is what this page looks like. Um, again, it takes a few seconds to completely load, but I can change, again, things like rotation lock, VPN. So most of these things can also be accessed directly through the drag down notification drawer if I pull to the corresponding tab. But again, you have a larger uh, view of these things and mouse and touchpad. So we'll be taking a look at convergence next. Uh, basically, all you need to do is connect using Bluetooth, for instance, uh, a mouse and maybe a keyboard to the phone, connect it wirelessly to a monitor as well, and convergence will automatically start up. So that opens up this desktop versions of Ubuntu which is pretty cool about so that gives me a bit more information about this OS how much uh, memory is still available on your phone 
and so on and so forth. Let's the camera app has a decent UI experience. It's very simple to use. You can change the orientation, take an image, or transition to the video recording. I can also view back my previously captured videos or images by swiping to the right, uh, but again, I have to make sure that I don't swipe all the way from the corner or the edge, otherwise that's going to open up my multitasking drawer. So I just swipe a little bit and that opens up that specific page. I can pull up again for more settings such as um, HD settings or resolution to turn on the flash, on or off, self timer, turn on grids for instance. So if I want a more accurate uh, look at whatever I'm taking, also HDR and uh, geotagging services can be found for the image mode. So there's a bit more settings there. So again, it's very easy to get used to and to set up. So if we take a look at the clock next, I guess, we're to go through some more of how the UI designed and is designed and looks, you'll notice that it really just shares a lot of resemblance to just regular desktop Ubuntu. If you've opened up similar applications there, uh, they are very similar in, in the DNA and the structure. So it's very elegant and beautiful. Again, reminiscent of Amico in many ways because it's all it was also a beautiful UI uh, from the visual perspective. Same thing with the calendar and with music even with the weather. There we go with San Francisco. Again, you have this really interesting symbolic representation of the temperature, um, as well as a, a bit of forecast information. I can also search up more cities if I want to. Uh, finally, taking a look at the terminal, it's a pretty standard affair. So all the standard Ubuntu or Linux commands can be operated here. So for instance, if I want to search up a specific document, I can use commands like ls, uh, cd to navigate, copy files. Uh, so everything is, is a lot you know, very similar to a desktop experience. I can bring up the keyboard down below here and tap, tap on uh, quicker commands like Control R, Control C built on here. So this is an application also that might work slightly better in convergence mode uh, on a larger display since it's easier to type out. But you can see it is possible also just on this little phone display, which is also fairly, fairly cool. So let's go to the web browser next and check out how that works. Uh, it's a pretty swift browsing experience. It offers tab browsing incognito mode as well. It supports full flash elements in addition to um, uh, more complex pages like New York Times, so desktop versions of sites. So indeed, we're going to try doing a test of New York Times just to see how it renders a very complex page with moving elements. It looks like the mobile version is going to try to load first, but we can simply go to the bottom of the page and tap on classic site to get the regular version. So there we go, the page is starting to load, all the elements are present, and it's uh, fairly you know, good in terms of web browsing and reading content. You can also of course pinch in and out of pages, and it does refresh and reload a little bit to load to the size of the phone. And from the top here I can also tap on this tab for more things such as bookmarks, I can share this page, download things, go to the private mode, or go to settings again. So it's a very easy to use, and the top is also, you know, always going to be where the ta where the address bar is, and I can also go back pretty easily. If I tap from the bottom up of the display, that reveals a new tab screen and also shows my currently tabs current tabs open. So again, it's very cohesive in terms of the gestures always coming up from the bottom up or from the edges of the display. So it works know very well. So overall that's just I guess all the core features of uh, Ubuntu Touch, you know all the core apps that you'll find on here, many which share again DNA with just a desktop version of Ubuntu which is no surprise uh, since you really want this to be similar to a regular Ubuntu version whether it's whether it's you know working on your tablet, your phone, or maybe even the future your smartwatch they just want everything to be in the same system so it's cohesive and everything just works just plugging in and uh, going. So Overall, I have to say from a UI UX perspective, everything is extremely smooth and elegant and it just makes a lot of sense um, and it's extremely, extremely well designed.